Hey everyone, today we're going to take some time and talk about the four stages to passing a kidney stone. So for those of you out there that are experienced with this, you kind of know what to expect, but for any of you people who have their first kidney stone or their first few kidney stones, this information should be pretty helpful. So I know that when I personally had my first few kidney stones, I went to the hospital, I went to the ER, and the medical staff there really couldn't tell me a whole lot about A, what was happening to me uh, before they knew. They couldn't just instantly identify the issue based on what symptoms I was describing. And B, even after they did know, they weren't able to really provide me with a lot of helpful information. And for me, this was a bit concerning because one in 10 people in the population are going to experience kidney stones at some point in time in their life. So my goal today is to help kind of explain the four different stages that you're going to go through when you are passing a kidney stone to highlight what you should expect, what kind of pain or experience. I guess, uh, sensation you should be experiencing. And then we'll talk about some of the different things that you can do to help you along these four different stages. So let's talk a little bit about stage one. So what is happening here is the kidney stone, which is generally, there's gonna form completely painlessly. Um, you know, unless that kidney stone has created a blockage of some sort in your body, you're probably not gonna recognize that you have one forming unless you've had an MRI or a CAT scan or something along those lines that would have identified it from an imaging perspective. But once it's just in your kidney, it's really not doing much. It's when it detaches is when the, the havoc starts to begin. So in this illustration here, I have just a, our left and our right kidneys and inside the kidney there's little pockets what I call, they're, what they're called calyxes, and that's where the kidney stones typically form. And again, the problem presents itself when this stone detaches itself from the kidney calyx, and your body recognizes that there's now an issue. There's a foreign object inside the body, and your body needs to get rid of it, part of an evolutionary benefit. But pain is going to be immense. This is the most painful stage of this entire process because your kidney is literally spasming in order to eject this stone. It's doing what it's supposed to do, but that whole process, that renal colic that you're experiencing is some of the most tremendous pain that anyone in the world will ever experience. Uh, ask women who have given birth who have also had kidney stones. The pain of the kidney stone for some women exceeds the pain of giving childbirth, which puts you on a completely different level when it comes to pain. But your body's doing what it needs to do in order to remove it. So one of the things that this stage really requires is effective pain medication. Now, we won't talk about over-the-counter prescription or natural stuff here. Find something that works for you and, and run with it because it's critical to moving through the rest of this process. Now, in stage two, that stone that was up here has now been expelled by the actual kidney is now going to make its way down what's called the ureter. And that ureter is a tubule that carries urine from the kidney down to the bladder. Problem is, the ureter is relatively long. It's about 10 to 12 inches, but it's only two to three millimeters wide in diameter in the interior. So kidney stones can range in size pretty dramatically. Some are less than a millimeter and some are larger than two centimeters. So very wide variance, but even a really small stone is gonna cause a tremendous amount of friction as it goes from the kidney down to the bladder. So the pain sensation is gonna change. So no longer is it that like you just got hit by a truck in the side kind of pain. It's more of a comes in waves as that stone moves. And then there's also a general sense of pressure where you can feel where that stone is probably located within accuracy, I'd say within a few inches inside your body as it moves. Because literally, that jagged little stone is kind of ripping and tearing its way down this ureter to get to your bladder. So in this stage, one of the most critical things that you can do is add an anti-inflammatory medication. Again, natural, over-the-counter, doesn't matter, but reducing that inflammation is gonna provide a significant amount of benefit because it's going to reduce the inflammation, which is what's gripping that stone in the ureter and causing all the friction. So it will loosen that up and allow the stone to move a little bit more freely. The other thing too is adding in a diuretic, and a diuretic is, its purpose is, increasing urine production and then also 
increasing urine output. And the more output, the more urine that you have passing over this stone, the more opportunity you have to move it down its path. So anti-inflammatory and diuretics at this stage, as it's making its way down the ureter to the bladder, will do a ton of benefit for you. Now, in stage three, that stone has arrived at the bladder. The stage two probably is a couple weeks um, if you're not doing anything to boost it uh, and could be as short as a few days if you are doing things to help it along with diuretics and anti-inflammatories. But once that kidney stone is in your bladder, the whole game changes. No longer is there the immense pain of stage one. There's not that waving pain and then pressure sensation that you have from stage two. You now have a persistent pressure in your bladder and an increased urgency to urinate or expel the urine from your bladder. Because your body still knows that there's a foreign object in there and it's going to try to get rid of it. So you're now going to start what I like to call as the yo-yo game. So I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember, but there was at a point in time back when I was in elementary school, there was a yo-yo out there. It was called the Yomega Brain, and you would throw it down, and at the end of its travel, it would sit and spin, and then it would kick back up, and then you'd repeat the process. So what's happening here is your body's saying, we got to get rid of this object, so it's making you try to pee more often. But what's going to happen is when you try to pee, that kidney stone is going to sneak its way forward and it's going to get lodged at the entrance to your urethra. So you'll start off peeing normal and then it will slowly start to trickle, trickle, trickle and then eventually you'll feel something and it will just stop and you won't be able to pee anymore. And this is another thing I want to point because this is somewhere where some people f start to freak out again. They already are a little bit panicked and concerned that they have a kidney stone and they're unsure. They've probably gotten poor information from their medical professional and all of a sudden now it's stuck and they freak out all again. They go back to the hospital, they'll go back to the ER, and the medical professionals can't really do much for you once it's at this stage. So just know that it's going to get stuck, but it will release itself. And one of the things that you can do in addition to the preceding things that we talked about is increase your water consumption. So generally when you're passing a stone, the recommendation is to consume three to four liters of water per day, which is about a gallon. So the idea behind that is to fuel that diuretic, pass more water over, give you more horsepower to do what you're going to do next in stage four. So inevitably, we talked about your stone is going to get stuck. Stage four, it's time to push. So it might feel a little bit disconcerting to think about trying to force this foreign object out of your urethra, but it's really what you need to do because medically they're not going to intervene once that stone is in your bladder. It's there. It's You're almost about to cross that finish line, but when it does get stuck, provided you've done all this stuff, you drank the amount of water that you need, just push. And then you'll hear one of the most gratifying sounds in the entire world. It's a little plink as that kidney stone hits the porcelain in the toilet bowl or your strainer or whatever you're using. But it's like magic to your ears, but you have to push. Once you feel it gets stuck, push. Continue to just push and all the things that you've done that led up to it will continue to support and you'll have enough horsepower in order to force that stone out. And again, it doesn't sound right, but it's what you have to do in order to complete this process and pass this stone. Now. It's really important that you take that stone that you just expelled to your doctor or to your urologist because you want to get it identified. Uh, a vast majority of the kidney stones that are formed out there today are a function of our diet or a misfunction of our diet. But there are things that you can do at this stage as well to help you boost uh, whatever you're doing from a diet perspective once you understand what kind of stone that it is. And those are called antilithics. So chancopedra, hydrangea root, gravel root, urva ursi, um, these are different types of herbs and I'm sure that there's uh, some OTC or prescription medication as well that's stone preventing. But taking those things will help you increase your protection against the formation of new stones. Uh, another thing that's in there as well is like freshly squeezed lemon juice or lime juice for its citrate and citrates prevent stone formation. So again, 
walking through this process. I hope that this helped explain some of the different stages that you're going to incur as you continue to pass the kidney stone that you might have. But if you have any questions, please drop us a line in the comment. We're very responsive. We want you guys to have all the information that you need in order to better manage this process because there's a lack of information out there currently. But please let us know if there's anything that we can do. Uh, we're here to provide information and education. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you again in the next video. Thanks.